Hello there, welcome back to Go On The Run. So today I'm gonna do a quick video on how to create a web service. Our web server can be used to implement the backend for your web application. In the previous set of videos, we were looking at encoding. We looked at encoding of JSON and XML. So typically your API front backend is going to accept either JSON files most time, JSON formatted data, or XML. But now we're gonna look at simply how to implement a web server. So let's jump right in. So to implement a web server, we're gonna use the net package and a sub package within a net package called HTTP because the web server uses the HTTP protocol. And as you can see, the net package is just for doing TCP IP stuff. And now there's an implementation specifically for HTTP. So we're going to come back to this, but definitely if you're going to be using the net slash HTTP packet, I strongly recommend that you read the documentation, but I'm going to show you very quickly how easy it is. So let's get started. Here I am in my go run directory. And so I'm going to start up my code editor. I'm going to create a directory and a main that go file to get us started. One of the first things you want to do is to implement a handler. So you want to decide on which path you want to support. So if I imagine that I'm going to implement a RESTful endpoint for say slash users, um, that's going to be my path. So a typical way of thinking about this is if I were to visit slash user in my web browser, what do I expect to happen? I'll see that it doesn't exist. So no user at that path. So this is the path I want to implement. So let's implement that path. So I want to do is tell the HTTP package that I want to handle this path. And how I'm going to handle it is by registering a function. So I'm going to do handle func and the path I want, which is slash users. Now there's another parameter I must provide here, which is the function that's going to be responsible for being called and taking care of this request. So that function, I'm going to call it user handle func. Okay. Now I still have to implement that function. What is the signature of this function? So HTTP package is going to take care of registering this handler for me. And when a request come in, call this function. But as you can see, it tells me up here that the function I have specified does not match the signature, which requires a HTTP response writer and a pointer to HTTP request. So let's put that in. But this function doesn't do anything. Now, the interesting thing is that this W or HTTP response writer implement the IO.writer interface. So you can still use all your formatted IO function from the FMT package to write a response back to the client. So this represents a writer that sends response back to the client. And this represents, this request represents detail about a request from that client. Okay, so that is a response. It's not very complicated or anything, and this function is doing much other than response to the user. But you could imagine that once we get a request, we could look at a type of method, whether it's a post or a get or update, and respond accordingly or take appropriate action. And of course, we can get detail about what type of method this request is from the request object, and we'll do that in a minute. Actually, let's do that now. This takes care of our handle or handling this request, but we still haven't started a web server yet. And so we here we specify the listening address, which is your interface that you want to listen on and a port. But since we want to listen on all interfaces, we'll simply use specify the port only. We also need to specify a handler. Now we're not going to talk about a handler right now, but we will in a few minutes. So I'll use the default handler, the default service mux. So I'll use nil. 
Now this method can return an error, so we should probably lock fatal if we cannot open, uh, we cannot listen and serve on this port. And that is all for our application. We have two lines in the main function and two lines in our function handler. If we refresh, now you can see that this was a get call to our endpoint and this is the result that we send back to the client. Now we can test this from other locations too. So here I am on another server and I'm going to make the same request. And you see I get back the same response and you can see here. All right, so now let's, we can do other things of course. Let's say for example, we wanted to have a RESTful endpoint that keep track of how many calls were made to that endpoint. So each time the endpoint is called, it's gonna return how many time it was called. Now we can do it here, but we'll have to use like a global variable, something like var, And each time we recall, we'll increment that counter. And add that to our result. Well, let's do this. Now, we're sending it back to a HTTP client, so we should really be formatting a web page. We, what we need to do is format our response and save it. And so we do a string format. So let's save that and run now. So basically what I've done is I've created a constant string and I still have my format specifiers. And then I did a sprint test to substitute the value and store it in S and then I'll print that result out. So I have to restart my program. And so hopefully you can see if I make a request, this value is changing. Okay, so that's one way of doing it, but I think this is sort of ugly, so I don't like this way of doing it. There's another way that is much cleaner in my opinion, and that is to do a handler. So I'll leave this there for comparison to the next way of doing it, and that is to say this. Report counter int is a type, and then I attach a method to the report counter. The method that I'm gonna attach is gonna have this very same signature and it implements the HTTP handler interface, which by the way is the same interface of an object you would have to pass here for your mocks. So how do I know that how the function I need to implement is called serve HTTP? Well, from the documentation, If you call the handle, so here is the handle func we were using, where you pass a string method and then a function signature, which is just your handler func, but, or you can use the handle function and pass a string method, but something that implements the handler interface. So what does that look like? This is the handler interface, serve HTTP, and it takes the same signature. So that's what we have here. So now this implement, the exact same interface that I need. So I'm gonna call this the reports interface. And of course I have to register a handler for that. So, and of course this time we're using an object. So the path is reports. And here we're gonna pass an object to, we have to get an object first. And I need a pointer to that because I implemented a receiver method that's a pointer to that object. And the reason why is I need to update it. So let's say I decide to do so let's simplify things here a bit.
as you can see same results okay now so far this doesn't look much cleaner than what I had before so let me clean it up and show you so instead of making this an int I'll make it a struct this is much more manageable code it's easier to understand and we can grow this report struct by putting other things in it but now you're gonna see the code works exactly the same way So what we've done is we've done shown two ways of implementing HTTP handler. There's only one other thing I, I want to show you. So notice how we register slash user here without a trailing slash. That's important. Or even reports, for example. It doesn't have a trailing slash. So let's say we wanted reports slash one. Well, if we decide to pass a request for reports slash one, not found. But of course this is found well if we put a slash when we add a trail in slash now this is treated as the root of a tree and so let's restart our application and this works notice how it completes its redirect to forward slash and it works fine but also this works So using a slash at the end of your URL path makes a difference. So you might want to think about that if you're implementing an API, a RESTful endpoint that's going to take parameters. So now it's up to you then when you in your handler to look at the path which you can get from the request and see what is passed and how you should handle it based on the method and so on. As we go through, I'll show you some other ways. There are some packages out there that makes this very easy to do for example if you're really interested you can check out gorilla mux it is one of the very popular one that makes handling and building restful endpoints very very easy so with that good luck and happy coding see you in the next video <laughs>